I must say, from 5,000 meters just on the edge of the Himalayas. <laughs> Pretty, uh, pretty amazing as you can see behind me. I'm pretty, pretty happy I'm up here. It's very cold. I want to take this opportunity for whatever reason to speak about and to share from this uh, joy that's coming up. As, as we recognize our true nature, as we awaken to our true essence, that doesn't neglect the fact that we will confront trauma. In fact, it might exacerbate it. <laughs> wow, as I'm talking, my lips, it's hard to talk because it's so cold. They might exacerbate the trauma sometimes because we open up consciousness. When we open up consciousness, it gives free reign for these emotions to arise in our experience. For a long time, when uh, I initially recognized this truth, the fundamental nature of my being as awareness, it stifled me that I was still so contracted all of the time. So what I would do is, was I would turn to meditate and I would meditate more and more and more in the hopes that I would transcend my trauma go beyond it, realize no self and all of my trauma would evaporate. It's bullshit. Don't believe that. And what we do is we, we buy, we watch people like influencers, you know, like it's sort of like the same as social media. Um, you hear all the, all the flack about watching, uh, comparing yourself to others by having Instagram and seeing someone with the perfect body. Um, and we're like, why don't I have that? Sort of like that with awakening. We might watch people, you know, like Angelo DeLulo, um, uh, Jeff Foster, Suzanne Chang, Ajishanti, um, so many good people I can think of, but, and nothing wrong with those teachers, right? But often we don't see behind the scenes that these people have very real emotional lives and that becomes unfiltered. Now, for me, that's definitely been the case. And believe me, I, I, I interviewed Christina Gamand and she said, I, she thought that um, people who meditate in the Himalayas, you know, go into the Himalayas, like I'm in the Himalayas right now, and meditate, they, they think they're gonna transcend all of their pain, right? Oh, they do transcend their pain to an extent. But if you, if you throw them back into like a relationship, um, watch them crumble. <laughs> and we've seen this with people like monks. You hear about monks who sexually abuse their students and like, um, you know, they repress their sexual energy their whole life and they come back to uh, the Western world and they, they become alcoholics. I think, um, uh, Chong Yen Trumpa, I think his name is, is a very, um, famous case of that. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, also other monks. So what I'm trying to say is, is we have a fucking emotional experience and it is dirty. It is gritty. And when you watch these non-dual videos and you're still suffering with these ancient contractions, very deep, I'm talking like, I'm not talking like mild contractions. I'm talking like when your gut is deeply contracted and you have something like complex trauma and you have things like suicidal thoughts sometimes because it's just so uncomfortable sometimes. That's what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about the, oh, I got a little bit agitated when that person talked down on me, right? So I'm talking about deep nervous system contraction. That can happen and you're not alone. Uh, really good people are talking about this, like Suzanne Chang, uh, sorry, oh, Suzanne Chang, yeah. Um, Simon Brown from awake here and now <laughs> these people and uh, people like Mihai, um, even Scott Killaby, you know, people like these, like this, although I don't agree with everything. Um, I really appreciate these people for shedding their, their knowledge and wisdom. Don't, so don't feel that you're alone, man. It can be freaking dark, you know, like when you're alone, you watch these videos and then you're like, what the hell's wrong with me? And that can even fuel suicidal ideation. Like the one thing I thought would finally fix me, awakening to my deepest nature, why am I still broken? 
what the fuck? You may, you, and then you may recognize consciousness and you're like, oh, okay. Hopefully you can hear me. You, you may recognize consciousness and you may think like, oh, okay, that's another thought. Oh, I'm not getting it. That's another thought. Then you rest back in consciousness, but there's still a lot of pain in your experience. So there's this subtle doubt in the background that's like, man, what the frick is going on here? Like, sh surely this pain's gonna go away. So my invitation is to A, recognize that you're not broken. And, and, I, and that can be really, really hard to set in when you're feeling guttural nervous system contraction that is basically screaming at you that there is something wrong with me. There's not. You're dealing with ancient traumas, you know, stuff from childhood, stuff cross-generationally passed down, and you need help. You need help with it, and that's okay. That doesn't mean that you're broken. We can't do this alone. Um, we need support. We need to work with people like somatic facilitators, people who get into the deep, primordial, ancient emotions in a loving and accepting way. But I also want to leave you with this video as I finish up here. I want to leave you before I die of altitude sickness. It's pretty low oxygen up here. Um, when you feel that pain, I want to invite you to make a decision. There's two options. We can, and I know this from direct experience very well, when we're fe feeling that deep, deep pain, we can A, uh, dissociate from it. We can um, abide as awareness and neglect the sense domain. We can neglect the sensations in the body. That's unskillful. It, it's useful to a point and you have to trust your instinct to know when it's valuable. But when you're dealing with this sort of pain, this, this awakening, this opening to consciousness, your true nature, ultimately you have to converge into the sense field so that nothing is neglected. Nothing is neglected. Not feeling, not seeing, not hearing, not smelling, not tasting, not consciousness, not thoughts. It's all welcomed in the totality of experience. Now, when we have trauma, you know damn well that when you do that, sometimes the sensations are so strong. So you have two choices. You could either A, like I said, dissociate, or B, accommodate the, the sensations. And you can, you can feel the sensations fully and deeply with wisdom, knowing that they're, they're maybe like inner parenting toward them or something like that, right? I think that's the more skillful route, but obviously like you have to trust your instinct. Sometimes when you, you, you need to call upon an energy that is uh, very viscerally in consciousness and that can, that can springboard you into a different state of being that can really help to open that trauma up. So I'm not saying anything's right or wrong. You know yourself better than anyone. But... If you choose the route, which I, I have found to be very valuable in my experience, I'm speaking loud because I can't, I don't know if the wind's gonna fuck the audio. <laughs> I hope it doesn't. When you, when you recognize you're in deep pain, there's a very, uh, very visceral, primordial essence that I want to name so you can recognize it in your experience that wants to self-sabotage. It wants to be a victim. And it does this out of a yearning for love, right? You imagine when you're a kid again, kids do this and we carry it into a problem. We exaggerate our pain. We think, mom, mom, I need your help. I'm in so much pain. And we get love for it, you know? Mom comes when we cry, babies cry, mom comes. And it's not bad, we take this into adulthood. And sometimes we need help, so don't don't demonize yourself if we, when we do this. But we internalize that as adults, and sometimes we play the victim. And I think that's where victim consciousness can come from, is we want to exaggerate our pain. And we do that, we hold on to the hot coal of suffering, so that we can get love. However, I think for me, as I did that, and uh, I honestly, if, if I admit to myself, I did do that, and I, it can still come up through trauma. 
that do, that strategy doesn't work if we're interested in awakening the heart into being bodhisattva warriors to being to cutting through ignorance and delusion but if you if that does happen be gentle on yourself as well right so every it, it, this path is about acceptance opening up to bottom line opening up to everything and being apologetic with yourself forgiveness so even if you do have victim consciousness okay fine open up that's what happened now but if we're interested in cutting through delusion and being stronger men stronger humans and awakening our hearts to everything not denying not hiding just opening up healing healing our trauma healing our attachment wounds like fearful fearful avoidance avoidant attachment or fearful attachment then i would encourage this uh, practical shift without neglecting the pain feeling the pain fully in the sense domain we lean into consciousness see if you can feel into this you feel pain in your experience open up to it breathe into it recognize if it's very visceral that the temptation will be to pull you in to victim consciousness but with a warrior warrior's heartful discernment you accommodate that you allow that but then you lean into that emotion lean through it and be the example that you can lean through consciousness you can open up to your primordial essence without neglecting the sensations and be the example like the you can even use self talk because complicity seeking here is very strong in this place we can if we were in a lot of pain it's very easy to suck back it be sucked back into victim consciousness especially if we have spiritual friends for example spiritual friends who who say like oh man i'm suffering so much and i you know and they you know and then you pick up on that and you're like well joe schmo he's suffering a lot so therefore i i can i'm going to justify the right to lean back into victim consciousness again if it happens lean into it it's okay accommodate it love it but then notice it's happening lean into lean through your sensations lean into consciousness lean into your true nature open up open up your whole body breathe through your pain and love yourself with each breath and just be mindful when that victim consciousness seeps back in the world needs especially strong men to lean into their consciousness like this in relationships to breathe into the pain Oh, that people are experiencing and do this exact same exercise open up your heart to everything especially when you have trauma and show yourself and prove to yourself through consistency over and over again this this takes hard work and you don't get a lot of validation for it and you need support sometimes you can't do this all alone keep leaning through keep leaning in and show yourself that you have the guts the balls the heart to to do anything in life use it for business use it for relationships use it for whatever you know for hiking up a mountain and 5000 altitude degrees when you want to stop and you've had an argument or you've you're having trouble in a relationship you know um yeah whatever for whatever keep opening that heart all right hopefully you can hear me hope it wasn't too much of a slow and I will salute you namas namaste namaste as I say here in Nepal that's China that's the Himalayas the Himalayan mountain range and uh, yeah very beautiful very gracious to be here very oh, wow okay guys a lot of love hope this helps in some way and, um yeah